in the headlines. INEC says sensitive election materials no longer to be kept with CBN. PDP Lagos State protests cancellation and rescheduling of House of Reps primaries in Abuja. Mob kills vigilante member in Abuja over alleged blasphemy. And on the foreign scene, driver killed several injured in high-speed train crash in China. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. <music> Hello and welcome once again. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Mahmoud Yakubu, says sensitive electoral materials will in the meantime no longer be routed through the Central Bank of Nigeria. He also specifically notes that beginning from the Ekiti State governorship election, INEC will not keep its sensitive materials with the CBN. According to him, this decision is to guarantee that electoral materials for the lined up elections are not compromised. The INEC chairman stated this while responding to questions in an ongoing dialogue in Abuja. Several individuals and groups have raised serious concern about the sanctity of election materials kept with the CBN after stories about the CBN governor, Mr. Godwin Mefele, indicating interest to contest for the country's presidential seat hit the airwaves in recent months. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission on Friday released the regulation and guidelines for the conduct of the 2023 general elections. INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu at a meeting of the Interagency Consultative Committee on the Election Security in Abuja said the Constitution, Electoral Act 2022, and the Commission's regulations and guidelines will now constitute the legal framework for the 2023 polls. During the meeting, the National Secretary, uh, Security Advisor Baba Gana Mungunu, represented by Sinusi Kaladima, vowed to crush perpetrators of violence and forestall any act that could undermine the 2023 election. According to him, the coming into force of the Electoral Act 2022 had made it necessary to review the Commission's regulations and guidelines that govern the conduct of the elections. With the coming into force of the Electoral Act 2022, it has become necessary to review the Commission's regulations and guidelines to govern the conduct of elections. Going forward, the Commission will focus attention on election administration, logistics, inclusivity measures, and above all, security. In fact, the two OPS order we received uh, encompasses everything that could pose a security threat in the state election. The ops order, if the IG, the intelligence community will religiously adhere to that ops order, uh, we are very, very optimistic that the Ekite election will be conducted smoothly without any rancor. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party is set to hold fresh primaries in Lagos, Imo, Benue, and Katsina states. In a statement issued on Saturday, the party's National Publicity Secretary, Debo Ologunagba, said the decision was reached after careful consideration of the Electoral and Appeal Panel's report on the Congresses held in the states. He said on Sunday, June 5, 2022, the rerun primaries for Ahiazu State Constituency and Osu State Constituency in Imo State will be held. Ologunagba added that on Sunday, June 5, the elections for Musawa, Zangu, and Ndume State Constituencies in Katsina State, Oru East, Osu Olu Federal Constituency in Imo State, and Kwande Ushongo Federal Constituency in Benue State will take place. He added that the primaries for the Lagos State House of Representatives of 24 consti federal constituencies will take place on Monday, June the 6th. And still talking politics, a group of aggrieved members of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Lagos State has organized a protest at the party headquarters, Wadata Plaza, in Abuja. The protest is coming after the National Working Committee announced the cancellation and rescheduling of House of Representative primaries that took place on the 22nd of May, 2022. According to PDP National Publicity Secretary De Debo Ogunogunagba, the Lagos State House of Representatives primary has been rescheduled for Monday, June the 6th, 2022. 
Agreed members of the party are crying foul that winners of the House of Representatives primaries had already emerged via a free, fair and credible election on May 22nd. They are therefore calling on the party leadership to maintain the status quo and forward the names of the House of Reps winners who won at the party primaries to INEC to avoid crisis via the planned rescheduled election on Monday. <laughs> And Governor Rotimi Akeredolu of Ondo State has assured that the All Progressives Congress, APC, will have a hitch-free presidential primary election on Monday. Akeredolu said this in a statement by his Chief Press Secretary, Richard Olatunde, on Saturday in Akure. Akeredolu is the Chairman, Subcommittee on Security and Compliance for the APC Special Convention and Presidential Primary Election. He said the party was ready for the election, adding that work had already commenced at the venue with security and other necessary activities as a priority. The governor said the APC, being a disciplined political party with disciplined members, would surely have a hitch-free primary election. Now to judicial matters. The Federal High Court in Kano has held that statutory delegates can participate in primary conventions, congresses, or meetings of political parties in accordance with the 1999 Constitution. Statutory delegates include the President, and Vice President, members of the National Assembly, Governors and their deputies, members of the State Houses of Assembly, Chairman of Councils, Councillors and National Working Committee political parties, among others. Justice Mohammed Liman stated this on Friday while ruling on a suit filed by Senator El Jibril Kugoa a legislative aid to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila. Gogoa filed the suit along with two others, Habib Usaini and Biliami Nishinkafi, and listed the Senate President, National Chairman of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Bajabi Amila, and the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, as defendants, with three days to the exercise. Justice Liman, in his ruling, held that Section 84, subsection 8, cannot be interpreted to have excluded statutory delegates from voting at conventions. Some members of the All Progressives Congress under the aegis of Geskia Youth Movement are asking the Federal High Court in Abuja to disqualify the former Lagos State Governor and Presidential Aspirant Bola Ahmed Tinubu from the party's presidential primary scheduled for Monday 6th and 7th. The members who made the request in a suit filed before the court listed APC and Tinubu as first and second defendants, while the Independent National Electoral Commission is listed as the third defendant. Part of their prayers include asking the court to determine whether Tinubu can participate in the APC primaries or that of any other political party, given his questionable educational background and date of birth. They are also seeking a declaration that, given the questionable educational background and date of birth, among other questionable issues, the APC cannot allow and or permit his participation in the primary election for the office of president. The group also wants the court to declare Tinubu cannot participate by presenting himself in any primary elections with any political party in Nigeria to be nominated as a presidential aspirant for the 2023 general election. A 37-year-old Umar Aliu has been elected as the governorship candidate of the Young Progressives Party, YPP, for the 2023 election in Bochi State. Aliu, who was the sole candidate for the election, emerged via a voice vote. Adam Imam was there and now reports. The governorship aspirant was elected by the delegates from all 20 local government areas. During the party primaries, which was supervised by officials of the Independent National Electoral Commission, and the security agencies. At the end of the voice voting process, the state party chairman, Hamza Garba, presented the candidates to party faithful and INEC as the winner of the primary of YPP, in line with the constitution of the party and the Nigerian electoral laws. Garba commended the party delegates for their support, and the party will send the candidate and his manifesto for development of youths 
and the state in general. Aliu in his response informed all why he joined the race. Is to ensure that we reduce the level of unemployment in the state. And the strategies that we are going to apply in ensuring that we reduce the level of this unemployment is to revitalize our maritime industries. When we revitalize those industries, we will employ more youth, and at the same time, our economy growth will aspire. The YPP believes that if the youth are given the chance, they will perform even better, noting that the time has come for the younger generation to take over the affairs of governance across the state. The time that youth will be given a chance to come and contest in a, a party, that will give them the mandate to go and contribute to their party. Because the youth are leaving behind, we are left behind. There are many things that youth can contribute because our youth, they don't want to uh, poor people because of, you know, they know has a, a percentage for the country. The leadership will bond in our uh, youth. So for that matter, I want to call a youth, may they conjure us. Youths in the state came out in their numbers to show support and solidarity during the conduct of the primary, saying their time has come. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Boch. Now, former National Chairman of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, Senator Victor Ume, has dumped the party for the Labour Party on Friday. He clinched the party's ticket for the Anambra senatorial seat for the 2023 general elections after participating in Labour's primary election. Ume will now battle Senator Uche Ekwenufe of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Abgas Dozier Mwanko and Chief Kodilichuku Okelekwe of the All Progressives Congress in the main election next year. This is coming a few days after ex-Anambra State Governor Peter Obi resigned from the PDP where he was aspiring to contest for president. Obi is now Labour's presidential candidate for the 2023 elections. Both Obi and Ume are from Anaucha local government area of Anambra State. One is that the um, Labour Party has offered me this platform to contest the election and continue to defend our people. Going to the Senate is very important for me at this point because um, our people are heavily challenged in Nigeria and the National Assembly is a place we need people who are capable, bold, courageous and competent because I came from an un unusual quarter from my estranged brother and that call made peace between two of us. We decided to put our differences apart and come together one more time for the good of our people. You're watching Trust TV News Update. Still to come on the news, IGP urges ICT-driven approach to fighting crime. Details of this and more after the break. Do stay with us. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. 
Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust TV News Update. Now we'll look at our top stories. INEC says sensitive election materials no longer to be kept with CBN. And PDP Lagos State protest cancellation and rescheduling of House of Reps primaries in Abuja. And moving on to more news now. A member of a vigilante group was on Friday killed in the Lugbe area of Abuja over alleged insults on Prophet Muhammad. It was gathered that the mob killing occurred at the timber market section of a fruit market in federal housing estate, Lugbe. Eyewitnesses said the victim, a Muslim, was notorious for insulting the prophet, adding that the latest was on midnight of Saturday. Reports say the local security outfit was outnumbered before he was killed and burnt in front of the office. Policemen have restored calm in the area, which almost got volatile following the killing. Meanwhile, the Inspector General of Police, Usman Ali Al Ali Baba, called on operatives of the force to embrace the use of native intelligence information and communication technology driven approaches to combat the trend of crime and criminality that seem to defy traditional patterns of policing. IGP Usman equally emphasized the importance of strate strategically deploying technological assets such as unmanned aerial vehicles upgraded road-to-base operational vehicles installed with high-tech communication and reporting features and technical intelligence apparatus. The IGP made the call in a statement following the arrest of two suspects in connection with armed robbery, kidnapping, illegal possession of prohibited firearms, and criminal conspiracy in Taraba State. According to the statement signed by the Force Public Relations Officer Olumuiwa Adejobi, the suspects are Abdurrahman Ba'u, aged 35 years, and Ahmad Umaru, aged 50 years, both from Gasol local government area of Taraba State. The duo were arrested in possession of one locally made revolver, military camouflage uniforms, three rounds of live ammunition, three operational swords, and hard drugs suspected to be tramadol and refinol. And in business news, the Federal Minister of Power has blamed the current dip in electricity generation on the partial shutdown of the Obeng gas plant. A statement by the spokesperson to the Minister of Power, Maile Isa Sanusi, noted that the plant was shut down to address the repair of critical gas processing equipment. Sanusi regretted that the incident occurred when other power plants on other gas sources are undergoing planned maintenance. He said Seplat Energy PLC has mobilized equipment, material and personnel to site with a view to expediting the restoration of normal gas supply to the affected power plants. 
While assuring that the repair work would be concluded over the weekend and normalcy restored, he said efforts are being made for a sustained improvement of supply across the country. And now a look at the foreign scene where a high-speed rail driver was killed and several passengers injured after a train derailed in southwest China's Weizhou province on Saturday, state media reports. The train, which was en route Guangdong province, derailed after running into debris that had fallen onto the tracks near a tunnel. Video footage published by multiple Chinese outlets showed severe damage to the driver's car, which was pulverized by the impact while the rest of the train remained largely intact. A rail conductor and seven passengers were injured and sent to hospital. CCTV showed adding that their lives were not in danger. The footage in Chinese media showed confused passengers and children screaming in one of the train cars after the crash, with food and belongings strewn across the floor of the otherwise undamaged car. And finally, in sports, head coach Jose Pacero has called forwards Victor Osimen and Samuel Chukwezi, Captain Ahmed Musa, Deputy Captain William Ekong, and 23 other players to the camp of the Super Eagles. This is ahead of this month's 2023 Africa Cup of Nations qualifying matches against Sierra Leone and Sao Tome and Principe. Nigeria will host Sierra Leone at the Mashud Abiola National Stadium in one of the day one matches in the campaign on Thursday. The Super Eagles will then fly out of the country to Marrakesh, Morocco, to play away to Sao Tome and Principe on June 13th. A statement by Ademola Olajiri, Director of Communications of the Nigeria Football Federation on Saturday, said Coach Pesero also invited goalkeepers Francis Uzoho and Adiwale Adeinka, defenders Ola Aina, Calvin Basi, Sani Faisal, Semi Ajayi, and Chidozie Awazim. And now, just before we go, here is a kicker. Christine's African's elephant doctor, Dr. Audrey Delsink, is a pioneering work as an advocate in the protection and welfare of endangered beasts in Africa's savannas and forests. Here, she shares with Bird insights from her 25 year journey with Earth's biggest land mammals. Let's take a look. Culling refers to the killing of the entire population or a segment of that population. For every female elephant that we vaccinate, we are saving the death of a potential eight to 10 elephants. This ultimately is going to be the answer to preserving elephants for the future. Promoting coexistence with elephant populations and these surrounding communities. And that wraps up Trust TV News update for this hour. Don't forget, for more news, you can subscribe to watch us live on YouTube and, of course, follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.